Our next exercise is a little bit contrived, but it helps show the design recipe. Let's suppose we want a show depth function that takes a GUI, and for every label or button in the GUI, it adds a number to the front of the, uh, the label or button to reflect how deeply nested it is within horizontal or, nest or vertical panels. So here, hello got a 1 in front of it because it's inside one vertical panel, and OK got a 2 in front of it because it's inside a vertical panel and also inside a horizontal panel. And if it were inside more horizontal and vertical panels, the number would go up higher. Once again, I have set us up with the template in place as we already know how it works, uh, and we can start writing examples. So let's write test show depth of our favorite label, pick a fruit. And if we're showing the depth of pick a fruit, how many horizontal or vertical panels is it in? Zero. So we should get back label zero, pick a fruit. Buttons are going to be similar. Show depth of button, OK. Let's say it's disabled. Show depth should not change the enabled state of the button. So the OK button is inside zero horizontal and vertical panels. If we do show depth on choices with list yes and no, uh, we haven't specified that this is going to change any choices. So in this case, I'm just going to keep it as a choice. List yes, no, with the zero item selected. And then we have test show depth. Uh, let's see, vertical. And let's put a label hello and a button. OK, that is enabled. So here's where something interesting happens, because we do have a vertical panel around this label and button. So now we want vertical label 1 hello, because it's within one panel, and button OK should also be inside one panel, still enabled. Show depth horizontal. Uh, this could be the same, but let's make it more interesting by putting um, a vertical stacking. We can pick any GUI we want, so I can pick a vertical GUI, uh, which is a label yesterday and a label tomorrow. And then that's horizontally next to a button called cancel that is not enabled. So this GUI, when we show the depth, is the same structure horizontal with the vertical inside, but yesterday is in two panels, and the button is inside one horizontal panel. So that's our test, and we've covered all the cases, and by picking a suitable horizontal case, I've managed to generate different kinds of interesting things. So let's see how the uh, implementation works. In the label case, we have the text to work with. What do we want to do with this text? looks like we want to append a zero on the front. So let's try that. String append zero to t. That gives us the right text, and then we wrap it up as a label. Great. That pass, that'll pass that first test. And something similar for buttons. We do label string append uh, zero to the text. Keep the enabled state and put that together in a button. Choices are even easier. We've seen this. We can just return the GUI. And vertical. Let's see. Show depth of T. T corresponds to label hello. If we do show depth of T, we get zero hello, which is not what we wanted here. Huh. What has gone wrong? So there are a couple of possibilities. One is that we need to take this result, label hello, and somehow look inside of it and change it to a one, a label one hello. But if we get into that business, then we have to deal with labels and buttons and choices. Anything can be here. So that's not the right answer. The right answer is we should be calling a function on a GUI that does the right thing. But to do the right thing in this case, uh, show depth, which is what we're calling on T, needs more context. It needs to know where it came from. How many panels has it seen already? So this is something that's like the name argument for enabled, for, for um, enabling the button, but it does change every time we would call it an accumulator because it's going to accumulate information about the depth. And that depth can be represented by a number. 
So we'll add an argument n to show depth. And then that number n is supposed to ref to accumulate how many we've seen, how many panels we've seen. So we don't want to string append 0 to t, we want to string append the number uh, to t. So let's make up a new function, prefix depth. Well, let's just call it prefix. Um, that takes a number n and a string. Right? And then that's the same kind of thing we want to do here. So n has accumulated the depth. We wish for a prefix function, which takes a number and a text label as a string and puts them together. And we can go through all the design recipe steps for prefix. We'll come back to that in a minute. So now if we do that, when we do show depth recursive call here, we need to pass something like n along, but this is where an accumulator is different for a number that's just along for the ride. The idea is that as we make a recursive call, we accumulate the fact that we are one level deeper. And the same thing for the bottom, we're also one level deeper. In fact, in all of these recursive calls, we're going down inside one panel. Now let's try again. So in our vertical case where we had label hello, we're going to do show depth. What was in? It was at zero. Actually, we need to fix all of our examples to say we are starting out at depth zero always. So we started out n is zero, t is hello, we add one to n and it gets one, so what we're going to get back is label one hello. Let's make that as an example. We are expecting that when we say, actually it's a label case, we're expecting that when we say label hello at depth one, then we should get one hello back. Right? And that will happen because, assuming we make prefix do this, it'll put a 1 on the front of the label. Oops, this one. Prefix will put a 1 on the, the label. So now when we do the recursive call, we get the right thing, and we will be able to just put these back together with a vertical. And with horizontal. Okay, the only thing we have to do left is to implement prefix. So my idea is that prefix of three and high should give me back the string three space high. So the way we put these pieces together is we will need to convert this number to a string. And the number to string function does that. And then we're going to put that together with t except not quite like that because we've lost the space in between them. So let's also string append a space before t. Okay. Uh, number to string is not a function, but there is a function called toString. Okay, now we've got an error still. It says function call with wrong number of arguments. That's because, that's because we don't want to make a label here, we want to make a button here. And I've got another problem. Uh, same thing here. <laughs> All right, I made my test match my, my uh, implementation, but it wasn't what I wanted. Okay. Now when we run our tests, our tests work. So you see a general rule here. When your function needs to accumulate information from the outside to know what to do now, uh, we call that an accumulator, put it in an extra argument. Right? Another thing you see from these tests is you're able to test sort of being in the middle of a computation by just passing a different value than your starting uh, value as the accumulated so far.